Well, the birds aren't too happy with me this morning. I have my helper here with me today. I'm showing Ashley the routine of feeding the animals in the morning. Dusty. Yep. So we sift through, look for the pieces of corn that get in there and the little seeds and stuff. How do those and we, get in we there? We pick them out. Okay, so bring their trough into the pa pasture there. Where does it matter where I put it? I just put it away from the fence, kind of in the middle, the some. Yep. Hey, boys. Over here, here's good. Oh, careful. I know, you're uh -huh. hungry. Here we go. Hello. I don't know if this is coming out on video, but right here, there's a bunch of like really, really tiny, tiny insect wow. eggs of some kind. There they are. For the chickens this morning, we're leaving them in the tractor. That's why they're not happy with us. We're gonna put their feed and their water in the tractor. We're not letting them out until we get the poultry netting up because if we let them out first, then they're gonna be out in the woods all day. We'll put the poultry netting up. They won't be able to get back in, that kind of thing. So we figure this will be best practice. Uh, trip over it. Grab their water. Yeah. Okay, now tilt it on its side. There you go. Yeah. Give another slash around. Yeah. And dump one more time there. Good. Good. Under that chicken right now, basically. Let me see it. Yeah, it's a dirty one. Dirty that, egg. That is a duck egg. No eggs in the nesting box. This box is so much lighter than the sheep fencing boxes. So just to show you real quick what we got, we got 82 feet of Premier One Supplies poultry net. It's 1248.3. 12 horizontal strands at 48 inches tall. The three represents the distance between the vertical strands. So th there's three inches between each vertical strand. To compare that to the sheep fencing, that's 12 inches. With the tractor within the, oh, check she's out. trying to get out. Yeah, that didn't work out. You can't very get well, through there. It? Okay, so with the tractor within the confines of the uh, electric fencing, now we let the chickens out. So we're gonna move the tractor the rest of the way. Um, it'll be easier with them out of it.
here's the new setup for now at least we moved the tractor to the north side of this little paddock we're gonna take the slack out of this in a minute but we put the fence line along the, the north end of this little wooded area here. This is where the chickens were going during the day. They were going back there, probably laying their eggs back there, and they were hanging out in the shade all day. So with these, with the tractor and the paddock being on the north side of these trees, they're going to get a lot of shade. As you can see now, they have all this shade here. Of course, it's morning time still. In the afternoon, they're still going to get the shade coming in this way. Um, and then it's not going to be till late afternoon that they're going to be getting um, a lot of sun from in this direction. We positioned the tractor to where the, the back end where all the paneling is is going to be facing towards that western sun. I put these black plastic step-in posts, the same ones I use for the reel system. As you can see over there. I put them on each corner of the poultry netting and I'm just going to use some baling twine to tie it up. The flaw in our plane here was right here. This is where the two ends of the fence meet and not having this as a corner was a problem. It's in the middle of this eastern end of the fence. There's too much slack here so what I did is I just pulled it out so it's no longer a square or a rectangle shape. It's more of a pentagon now and I had to use an additional step in post and tie it off here to make it more secure. I think it's fine now, it's not going to cause any problems like that, but uh, just something to keep in mind when setting up these things, try to use the ends at a corner for more stability. I have the poultry netting tied with this poly wire over here to um, the sheep fencing, which is going to carry the electrical current over, making this whole fence hot here. Nope. Okay, so no chicken eggs yet today. It's late morning, we're probably not gonna get any. Though when I've been coming out in the evening to put them up, there's been an egg in the nesting box each evening. But they've been going to, to roost in the nesting boxes, so they're not really using them appropriately. Little guy here is taking advantage of the fence being off right now, but I'm about to light it up, so hopefully he'll get off of it. You may wanna move, dude. Cool news guys, John Shepard from the Shepherd Ranch got in touch with us and he said he's got some birds for us. So we're gonna head over there and see about expanding our flock.
just got back home from the Shepherd Ranch with four new pullets. We have one escapee over here. We have three Morans, three copper Morans. Two are black copper Morans, and one is a blue copper Moran. And then we have one Americana. And the difference between the copper Morans and the Americanas right now is that the copper Morans have a little comb. Mommy. And the Americana doesn't. She just looks like a young bird. Mommy. So we got these four pullets today, and they're about two months old, so they're not laying yet. It'll be about three more months, maybe four, before they start laying. And when they do, the Morans will make these really dark brown eggs that are just gorgeous. And the Americana will make a really nice blue colored egg. Here's an egg that is probably from an Americana. It could be an Easter egger, uh, but we just got this and it's a nice blue color. So we also made a deposit on 12 other birds and they'll likely be a mix of Rhode Island Reds and Americanas and probably some more Copper Morans. And those aren't even hatched. Uh, so probably the eggs haven't been laid yet. So it's going to be at least a month before they're born And then it'll be a couple months, maybe three months after that before we get them We created a new challenge for ourselves. The pullets are a little smaller than I thought they would be, and my concern is that they'll be able to get through this netting here. It's getting late and we haven't had dinner yet, so we're gonna run inside, get some dinner going. We're gonna leave them in the crate for now, just until we figure something out. We ran out of daylight, so we're finishing up in here. Basically, we have two options, I think, with the pullets. One, we can put up a fine plastic mesh that goes at the base of the electro netting, which will keep the pullets from going through. The other option is what John Shepard recommended, which was that we uh, leave the pullets in their coop locked up for a couple days so it really imprints upon them that this is home. So if they do go out of the netting, they'll know to come right back there. There won't be any issues. Since we have the older hens in there, the rooster and the ducks, I don't want to leave them locked up for a couple days or any length of time. I, I want them to be able to get out. I also don't want to have a situation where um, they're used to going in and out of the electric fencing. I want, I don't want them to get accustomed to that behavior. So we're definitely leaning towards looking at putting up the plastic mesh netting. Be sure to check out tomorrow's video so you can see how this all works out for us. Thanks for watching.